So here's a little nice little neat thing. I'm not sure if Microsoft actually designed this part, but I actually noticed it. When you actually try to put the pen back into its cubby hole here, if you try and put it in the wrong way around, it would actually try and flip itself back up together. <laughs> See how it did that? That's pretty cool. Get it one. Be agent out here. We're going to look into this Microsoft Service Pro X. Now I've already done another video for the unboxing and first impression of this Service Pro X. If you haven't checked that out, I'll put a link in the description below so you can check it out after this. That video is more about the touch and feel and also see how what the ports of this computer here and also the keyboard as well. Now this video is more about the temperatures and this, we're going to look more about the screen as well and also more about the software there more than anything else. So I'd first like to make a big thank you to CompNow for the, without them, this review wouldn't be possible. Now I'm going to do this review a little bit different. I have seen other reviews for the Surface Pro X and unfortunately I don't have any good news for you. I'm going to be brutally honest. Could I recommend the Surface Pro X? Unfortunately I cannot and that was because of the pricing and also the software limitation, especially the software limitation on this computer here. So if Microsoft actually brought down the price of this, I can definitely recommend this computer and the market is trying to compete at, but unfortunately it is at a quite a bit of a premium there at the moment. But what this computer is, it's a very good glimpse into the future of what the Surface Pro lineup could be. I have to say, hardware wise this is gorgeous and i love it the hardware on this is beautiful i really love it it's just the software and that's what really brings it down at the moment we're not ready for the software on this computer here and we just have unfortunately have to wait for developers to catch up now as for running software natively from the microsoft store that's great i've ran a few and it's been great but unfortunately the microsoft store is up for the arm because that sub 300 applications and around about half of that was games so it is really limiting uh, if you are limited to the microsoft store now i have done a lot of tests for a lot of other professional software try to install it and i'll put actually the list up here so you can actually have a look at browse through what i did but basically in the end after a while i kind of gave up because quite simply a lot of it won't run on this computer here some of my viewers might be interested to see what can be installed from the Creative Cloud Suite for the Service Pro X. So I'm just going to scroll down the list down here, what is made available through the Adobe Creative Cloud. But what I do notice is Premiere, After Effects and Audition is missing from this list here. So you won't be able to do any video editing on the Surface Pro X. Now I've also tried to install DaVinci and that is unable to install it as well. So definitely not a video editor's dream for the Surface Pro X. Unfortunately, we need to wait for software companies to port their software to be ARM-based compatible. I have seen on the market a few more other ARM-based tablet laptops computers and Microsoft joining that is really good because that means we might be pushing that market there and it could be the future of the market for tablet computers so we just need to wait for softwares to be compatible and if we've got more hardware uh, vendors actually moving towards arm base then of course software companies will be heading that way as well so this again is a very good glimpse into the future so enough of me gobbling about let's have a look at the hardware there now i must say i love this 13 inch display it is beautiful gorgeous and it is quite close to the edge there is definitely a big improvement from the surface pro 7 that they've done so i definitely like the surface pro x display now i've actually done more about the color of the display in another video i'll put a link in the description below as well so you can check that out but where i should do test out the color calibration of this computer here now microsoft has stated it is 450 nits of brightness and when i did the testing it came out at 447 nits of brightness so that's pretty much on the mark there for microsoft claim for the brightness of the screen so that's pretty good and i find you're not going to struggle in looking at daylight for this display here so that's absolutely fantastic so i can't wait when surface pro lineup is actually going to get all get one of these screens here so that's definitely great there now the next thing is about the speakers now i have to say the speakers have been upgraded 
beautifully. Now they are both on the side. I can see they're a little bit bigger compared to the Surface Pro 7. And that is absolute great. And they sound so much better as well. They even got a more of a surround feel to it. It's got a little bit of bass there as well too. So these grease are great. Now, when I did the testing for the loudness of the sound, it came out at 87.7 decibels. So that's pretty good there, I must say. But it's just the quality of the sound was definitely improved compared to the Surface Pro 7. Now, of course, the Surface Pro X is works very well with the Surface Dock as well. Now, I have tested the Surface Dock and pretty much its maximum you can do is dual external monitors. So two external monitors and then you can actually plug other monitors if it's going directly into the Surface Pro. So I think maximum is around about three is what I managed to get out of that. But pretty much two external monitors, what you're really looking at it nicely there. Now I did test out the Thunderbolt dock on the Surface Pro X and you gotta be careful because the Surface Pro X USB-C is not Thunderbolt enabled. So your Thunderbolt, it will display to the two external screens, but anything else like the USBs and ethernet on, or even audio on the Thunderbolt dock, they won't work. So. Don't even try and buy a Surface Pro X with a Thunderbolt dock. What you need is a non-Thunderbolt dock. And I actually did test with the WD-19. That's the non-Thunderbolt version. And that worked fine. It actually gets the displays, two external display again. I couldn't get the third external display working. And I've got the USBs and Ethernet and the audio working there. So definitely don't get a Thunderbolt dock. That's the key to it. I like to mention if you plug in the USB-C dock, it will charge the Surface Pro X but that at a normal speed. But if you have a Surface dock and plug it into the Surface Connect port here, it will quick charge the Surface Pro X. The Surface Pro X in a corporate environment can't be imaged using a traditional SCCM. What you do require is a Azure service. Now, if your business hasn't got Azure service yet, and more than likely, it's gonna make life a little bit difficult to try and image and manage these Surface Pro X. But this is what Microsoft is moving us towards. So it'd be nice if this actually is very responsiveness. So I find it actually quite responsive for the computer when it's running a native app. Uh, I've also got here, very, very nice. You can just see, it's not really far behind from a normal computer. I'm not really waiting any more different here, so. That's what I can say. It's very nice. You can turn it around very nicely. I find it actually pretty responsive here as well too. So I've just got, and I've got a few softwares installed and opened. That's all right. You can do that. So close it. It's pretty snappy, I must say. So I'm not. slow down by the speed of this computer here at all. So I find it actually quite nice. I love the ARM process because it's near instant on and also ARM with this Windows Hello configured. It is so quick to log in, watch this. That's how quick it is, absolutely great. The processor in the Surface Pro X is the SQ1 and it is rated at three gigahertz and it has eight cores. Now they are eight physical cores, so they're not virtualized cores, so they won't be using the hyperthreading that Intel likes to do. Now I'm going to stress test the processor and at the moment I've got it in power mode here as you can see. I'm going to press start and we're going to see if this has any thermal frothing and see how it runs. So at the moment it is at 2.37 gigahertz and as we're moving forward it is pretty much still at 2.3 gigahertz as well. Has it really changed from 2.3 gigahertz? That's pretty good. That's a minute there. And it's still at 2.3. That's pretty good. It's feeling the back of this computer here and feels pretty touchable. Um, near the center, underneath the, where the well facing camera is a bit hot, but you can still put your hand quite safely on there as well. So that's nice. I wouldn't be putting my finger on there for too long. 
that's pretty much stable at 2.3 gigahertz. Not bad. Now I've had the processor run at 100% for the last 20 minutes or so and pretty much the CPU is now rock stable at 2.29 gigahertz. Now I've also have the power plugged into this because if you don't have the power plugged into the computer the CPU utilization won't be close to 100%. Uh, it will actually go to a maximum of 80% in, and that's even if you put the power mode to best performance as well. So you do need to have this plugged in to actually get the best utilization of the processor for the SQ1. Now we're going to have a look at where the heat is. So I'm just going to turn this around. So looking where most of the heat is on the Surface Pro X, it's actually on the back underneath the well facing camera it's actually near the center here and that's where the most hottest part there and it's actually quite toasty actually to touch on the side here it is also quite toasty to touch as well but that's only because i am running at 100 percent utilization now if you're actually having this in tablet mode it doesn't get that hot at all so it's only because i've got the power plugged in and i'm stress testing the computer at its maximum so let's measure how hot it actually really gets so using my trusty food thermometer and Touching the back of the computer, it is measuring at 46.1 degrees Celsius and my ambient temperature is 25 degrees. So this is quite toasty. Now be mindful when it's in undocked and it's just using battery, it actually doesn't go that hot even when you're playing games itself. So it's actually pretty decent, it's just that when you actually do have it try and process really hard, then you're looking at a much hotter computer there which you probably wouldn't want to touch for most computers anyway. Those that are interested in the performance of the Microsoft SQ1 processors, the only benchmarking software I managed to install successfully and run was Passmark. So I'll put up the results for you so you can actually compare that also with the Surface Pro 7 and as you can see it's about three times faster than the Surface Pro 7. As for the world facing camera, it is semi alright, you can zoom in, zoom out, that's most likely to be digital zoom, you can take videos as well, oh I can do panoramic so that's kind of nice there, and of course videos there as well, you can also scan a document if you've got a document to scan as well too, this is just a Windows default software here, so it's not too bad in terms of camera wise, it's actually decent, so you can actually take some nice snaps here and it's got HDR mode as well, so I've just got to turn it on and off. So here's a little nice little neat thing, I'm not sure if Microsoft actually designed this part, but I actually noticed it. When you actually try to put the pen back into its cubby hole here, if you try and put it in the wrong way around, it would actually try and flip itself back up together. <laughs> See how it did that? That's pretty cool. If it doesn't flip itself back together again, um, it will actually try and pop itself back out but normally just puts it back together again, so that's pretty cool. I'll just do it again one more time, see? It's actually pretty cool that it actually can flip itself back around by itself. Pretty sweet. So we're going to do the line or jitter test. Now I've got Critter open because I managed to install that on the Surface Pro X, and we're going to just do some diagonal lines. Now I do have my palm on the surface here, and I'll just do some slow diagonal lines here. I think it's doing pretty well there. I'm just going to do some horizontal lines as well. And I do have my palm on the screen. So that's pretty good. And I'm just going to bring in a metal ruler in now. Last time I actually did a metal ruler and that was really weird. But so this is my usual one I usually do. Whoa, there we go. Now I do have my palm on the screen. So definitely. I was a lot better there, but then it goes all wonky again. I'm going to do it horizontally as well. Horizontally, it does okay-ish. So I'm going to take my palm off the screen to try and do this. It's pretty much the same results there. Same, I'm going to do put my palm off. pretty much the same as well. Now I'll do some spirals. Now I am not a digital artist or good at drawing in any fashion so I'm just doing this test to try and help those people who do understand this test. 
that's all right that's pretty good and it is sensitive no it doesn't look like in critter that this pen is able to do pressure sensitive there so for those who are interested in what can be done for this surface pen here this is the configurations there now there is no software for the surface pen purposely so you do have to use the windows default now it's pretty much you can just pretty much configure the top button here and that's pretty much all i can really see you can't even really configure this one on the side there i haven't figured that out neither now if anyone does know please put a comment below it might help some people who have actually purchased this device now what you can do is you can just have a look at that's pretty much all the options it's pretty limiting what you can actually do with the top part and configure and it's double tap again very very limited there as well and again there's only very few supported default apps from windows that you can actually do with this double click and what it can do as well I must say, I must give my hats off to Microsoft for that innovative idea of hiding the pen inside the type cover and not just less chance of losing it really, that's fantastic and just a new idea of it, I just love it, it's great there, I just wish the, the pen had a little bit more functionality, it would be fantastic there. Now if you enjoyed this video or find it informative, give it a like and if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button on the bottom right hand corners. I do try to upload a new video every Tuesday. And just remember, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. I'll see you next video.